Something was stalking the forests and pastures of southern France. Something monstrous. Literally. Between 1764 and 1767, around 100 people in the Jovadon region of southern France met violent deaths. Around 50 or so people were able to survive the terrifying and brutal attacks. According to the locals, the culprit behind these killings was a creature known simply as the Beast of Jovadon. What was this beast? Through the centuries, lots of different candidates have been proposed. Some say it was just some extraordinary wolf or pack of wolves. Others have suggested a wolf-dog hybrid, or that maybe it was an escaped lion or hyena. Most boringly, uh, some have said that there was no beast, and the whole thing was simply a case of mass hysteria. Some have even suggested that it was a human serial killer, or some prehistoric beast that somehow survived to early modern times. I'm Matt, and I'm a novelist. I'm Brian. I'm a designer and illustrator. I'm Drew, and I'm a physical therapist. We work together to create books about dinosaurs, ancient cultures, and mysteries. We love this stuff. But we don't always agree. We are... Now, earlier on, I mentioned that the beast killed around 100 people and injured around 50. Now, as you can imagine, with so many attacks, there were reams of reports from the survivors of these attacks. It's kind of hard to know what to do with these reports. It's easy to imagine that some of them may have been embellished or exaggerated in the retelling, and some of the memories might have been colored by the understandable terror that the victims were in. So it should come as no surprise that these reports don't always agree with each other. As researcher Brian Dunning explained, quote, There is little consistency to the reports. The beast was said to be red and covered with scales, or it had long fur and a mane and black stripes. It had a long, thin head like a greyhound, or it had an enormous head with a huge mouth. It had great talons instead of a wolf's claws. It could run at supernatural speed. Sometimes it hunted alone, sometimes with the mate sometimes with its young, end quote. And as it so often does, the Wikipedia entry for The Beast of Jovanion gives a pretty good summation of these varying accounts. It says that the beast was, quote, a tawny russet color with dark streaks or stripes and a dark stripe down its back, a tail longer than a wolf's ending in a tuft, according to some contemporary eyewitnesses. It was said to attack with formidable teeth and claws and appeared to be the size of a calf or cow and seemed to fly or bound across the fields toward its victims, end quote. And again, with all these different accounts factored in, there are a few other themes as well. First, and most troubling, was the beast's choice of prey. It never attacked the herds of cattle or sheep. It only attacked the humans. Now, the obvious candidate for the beast would be a wolf. Wolves did live in Jevodon at this time, as they lived throughout much of Europe. Wolf attacks on livestock were nothing new and would have been something the locals were familiar with. Wolf attacks on humans probably would have happened as well, though these would have been much more rare. It's now well established that wolves, in general, don't view humans as a prey source. And absent extraordinary circumstances, they typically leave humans alone. But these extraordinary circumstances do sometimes occur. So the locals would have been familiar with wolf attacks. And there's one thing where these witnesses seem to agree almost across the board. The beast was not a wolf. Yes, it had many wolf-like characteristics. But the locals, who again would be very familiar with the wildlife in their region said there were key differences between the beast and the wolves. Now, eventually, news of these killings in Jovadon began to spread as the killings themselves piled up. Soon, Jevodon was crawling with monster hunters. During one hunt, an estimated 30,000 men were participating. Uh, their tactics included traps of all kinds, everything from using poisoned meat as bait to dressing soldiers up as women to trick the beast into attacking. Nothing worked. The beast seemed impervious to harm, either from spears or from guns. There were several reports of the beast seeming to be mortally wounded, only to later get up off the ground and escape. 
some of the attacks happened in quick succession over an impossibly large distance, leading some to suggest that there was more than one beast. Some even attributed supernatural powers to the beast and suggested it could walk on two legs, kind of like a werewolf. The man credited with the final kill was a local hunter and poacher named Jean Chastel. Uh, for his part, Chastel thought the creature was a werewolf, so he apparently loaded his musket with silver in addition to all the usual fare and began stalking the creature through the woods. He eventually fatally wounded the creature and brought the body back for measurement. Now there's good news and bad news with what happened to the body. The good news is that it was able to be measured and it was written down in a report called the Marin Report. Unfortunately, that's where the good news stops. The body was flaunted to all the locals who came in to get a piece, literally, of the monster. Some of them took scalpels and started taking pieces of it apart. So by the time the report could be filed, most of the most interesting parts of the creature were gone. The Marin Report notes that the dimensions of the beast are roughly the size of a wolf. However, it goes on to note, quote, This animal appears to be a wolf, but an extraordinary one. By its figure and its proportions, it is very different from the wolves that one sees in this country. This is what more than 300 people from all around have certified. Once again, whatever happened in Jovadon, it was real. Real people died at rates far in excess of what we would expect from normal wolf predation on humans. The question isn't whether the phenomenon happened. It's what caused it. Okay, Brian, what do you think caused it? So, I am going to be taking the approach of an animal that people believe to be extinct. But maybe it's not extinct. Surprised? Not at all. Great. Me neither. So, as we look into the description of the creature, it has a lot of characteristics like you were describing, Matt, that look like a wolf. But a little bit of an enhanced wolf sometimes. What if it's not a wolf, but something called a bear dog? Have you ever heard of these? I have not heard of bear dogs. All right. This is going to be pretty cool, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so the bear dog is also called the, I'm going to see if I can get the name of this right, Amphision. So this is a creature that is believed to have gone extinct. It used to live in Europe, in Eurasia, into Europe, Asia, and also some various types have been found in North America. So basically what this animal is, the best way to describe it is literally the mix of a wolf and a bear. So it has a body that's a little more similar to a bear, but it has a long tail that's um, in the pictures I've seen, it looks a little more similar to like a lion, but it's a long tail, but then its head is like a huge wolf. So there's a few different species that they, that they have discovered. Some of it, they vary in size, just like dogs do or wolves do even, but they can grow as big as like two and a half meters up to like a thousand pounds. They can be very, very big. And the ones that they found that are on the bigger side look more wolf-like or look more bear-like. But kind of the ones in that middle range look a little bit more wolf-like. So they don't think that these creatures are directly related to wolves or bears. They're kind of like a middle ground, right? <laughs> so they're like cousins to, to the creatures, right? But not directly related. Some pros for this. One, people have never seen what this creature looks like. So when it comes to the markings of the beast... It could directly relate to this. <laughs> no you evidence one way or the other. <laughs> you can't prove, you can't prove that it wrong. didn't look it. Yeah. You can't prove me wrong, so I win. <laughs> the second case is kind of what you were saying, Matt, how the locals would have been would have seen wolves and know what wolves look like. And when they're describing this as looking kind of like a wolf, but bigger and scarier and not quite like a wolf. It would make sense that this would line up with that, right? Again, its head looks like a wolf. Its like snout and its teeth are very wolf-like. Its body is bigger like a bear, but still has the long tail. 
So you can see how that could lead to some of these descriptions that you're seeing going around. Another thing, a pro with this as well, it seemed like most of the attacks, I know you said that there were some descriptions of it hunting in packs, some of it hunting alone. It seems like this was more of a solitary creature. So it would make sense that this would be kind of a sole rogue beast roaming around the French countryside, right? Wreaking havoc, havoc. And then, again, once the beast was killed, the locals were fascinated with it and pieced it apart. Like you said, <laughs> if it was just a wolf, it would seem odd that they would do that, right? But it had to be something that they didn't know what it was. So one of the popular um, creatures that people think this is, is a hyena which you can kind of see looks like a wolf, a little bit different, but it is described having a tail. Hyenas don't really have much of a tail to note. And we know how we get hung up on tails from one of our previous episodes. We just had a huge oh. discussion on <laughs> tails. <laughs> we did. So yeah, this one obviously has a tail more described in the um, encounters where a hyena won it. Any questions? Let's address the obvious thing, right? Given the fact that, you know, Brian, me and you disagree on the age of the Earth. You think the Earth is young. I think it's it's old. So we're going to have different prior probabilities for how plausible it is for something like this to survive. But even given that, even under your model, there'd have to be a population of these things surviving for thousands of years at least. And you'd think yes. other people would have seen it before Jean Vadon. So how do you explain all that? And that, Matt, is the question, isn't it? <laughs> Where I think my argument breaks down. Um, yes, I think this is a really cool possibility. But do I think it's the most credible? No. Because, <laughs> yes, I, I would have to say that to make this more legitimate, I would have to see more evidence of things like this happening throughout history there doesn't seem to be that thread like i i i can see when we talk more about the dinosaurs right where it's like you can kind of see that thread of truth and evidence within mythology and different stories from around the world where it's like you can kind of see how that would work but with this one there's no real evidence of that that i've been able to find it's just a cool candidate <laughs> But okay, maybe, so let's... maybe there was a rogue one that was maybe there was a population <laughs> way out in the boonies where nobody ever saw them in this one. It got trapped away. in ice just like Captain America and you know well, it wouldn't have had to get trapped in ice. It was just there was a population of them living somewhere else in Europe. This one somehow straight away wreaked havoc on this random spot in France. Plausible. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like, Brian, your heart is for the bear dogs, but your head cannot accept it. Yes. All right, Very so, so, so. Let's, try, let, let's try something here. Um, so let's say, okay, we know Jean Vadon was a very isolated part of France, right? Very wild. So mm -hmm. maybe a very small population can survive there. And yeah. because it's so isolated, it, stories don't get out. And then maybe the peasants finally do start encroaching on their territory. And that's what sets the few last survivors off to go on this rampage. Like they they feel pressure, like their prey is being threatened, their territory is threatened. So yeah. they reach out to the, to the available uh, easy prey source. Or maybe we could say that legends of werewolves throughout Europe could have their basis Ooh. in bear dogs. Maybe for all we knew, they sometimes would go on hind feet, and that could get get uh, people talking. That they'd is be big a great enough, theory that I did not think of, and I like. They'd it. be big. They'd be big <laughs> enough so that if they did rear up to their hind paws, that they'd be more than man sized, right? Well, and and if, they're, they're... if the body is built more like a bear, it would make sense that it would stand on its two feet. Then there you go. I have no idea bear. what the science is on bear dog anatomy. This may not even be plausible, we're, but we're, we're just spitballing here. Uh, Drew, any other... On their two feet. <laughs> not for long, but you know. <laughs> Completely within the realm of possibility. It is. Me. And now I'm also convinced these are werewolves, so thank you, man. <laughs> Win. <laughs> we just discovered our next episode. Wow. 
And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I've mentioned before, we're a new channel, so we really appreciate uh, if you'd like or subscribe. Also, remember to leave a comment. Let us know your theories on what the beast is. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And don't forget to boop that like button and subscribe. Also, help me start the bear dog werewolf revolution. <laughs>